Um, they're asking for two things here. The equation of the, of, uh, for the tangent to the curve at P. So that means we want this red equation. And then the horizontal tangent to the curve at Q. So we'll start with the first one. If we want the tangent to the curve at this place, then we have the x-coordinate for where this locates. We want to know what that red slope is. So we can take a derivative of the equation they gave us with respect to x. So the derivative of a constant is 0. The derivative of cosecant, negative cosecant x, cotangent x. Oops, and I forgot my square root of 2 out front. So this should be negative square root of 2 cosecant x, cotangent x. And the derivative of cotangent x uh, should be negative cosecant squared x. Okay, so that's our derivative. And we want to know what the derivative is when x equals pi over 4. So we want to evaluate the derivative when x equals pi over 4. So I've seen this shorthand notation. I'm not sure how official it is, but it's saying the derivative of y when x is pi over 4. Okay, you don't necessarily have to write all that out, but I wanted to leave a note to remind myself that this is the derivative when I've plugged a certain value in. Okay, so the calculator could get you cosecant pi over 4. Just make sure it's in radians. Uh, I'll show you how to do it without a calculator real quick, though. Okay, so pi over 4, that's 45 degrees. So that's the 45 degree angle. And then we always make a right angle with the x-axis. And if this is 45 degrees, and if we draw in the unit circle, then this is square root of 2 over 2, and this is square root of 2 over 2. So cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So instead of doing opposite over hypotenuse, we're doing hypotenuse divided by opposite because it's the reciprocal. So cosecant pi over 4 is 1 over the square root of 2 over 2. And if you flip and multiply that fraction, that's 2 over the square root of 2. And if you multiply the top and the bottom by square root of 2 to rationalize the denominator, it looks like this, and 2 divided by 2 just makes square root of 2. Okay, so all that work, we just found out the cosecant pi over 4 is square root of 2. Cotangent pi over 4, cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. So tangent is usually opposite divided by adjacent, cotangent is adjacent divided by opposite. Either way, it's 1. So cotangent pi over 4 should be 1 in your calculator. Then cosecant squared. We found out that cosecant pi over 4 is square root of 2, but we're supposed to square that result. So you put a 2 up here. So this is negative square root of 2 times square root of 2. So that's negative 2 minus square root of 2 squared makes 2. So it's minus the 2 there. So we get negative 4. So the derivative when x equals pi over 4 is negative 4. So if we want the equation of this line, we know what the slope is now. We know what the slope at that instant is. We just need to find the y-intercept. So plug in the point. Plug in 4 in for y. Plug in pi over 4 in for x. Then we got to solve for b. So those cancel. That gives us 4 equals negative pi plus b. So 4 plus pi equals b. So the full equation is y equals negative 4x plus 4 plus pi. Because this was what our b was equal to. And then, um, I don't know if the textbook changed that to a decimal, but you could. That's the first part. That's the tangent to the curve at p. Okay, let me see how far I can back this up. Okay, the next part asks for the horizontal tangent at Q. If it's going to be horizontally tangent, we, do, we don't need to know the point. We can figure it out ourselves because a horizontal tangent is where the derivative equals 0. So I'm going to plug 0 into the left side of this equation. It'd be easier to type it. Okay, 0 goes in for y prime. So that's negative square root of 2 times cosecant x cotangent x minus cosecant squared x. Okay, so we've got to solve that equation. So it's 
pretty ugly, but you want to add cosecant squared x to both sides. Okay, so you get cosecant squared x on the left side. So if I'm trying to solve that equation, um, I could divide both sides by, well, actually, let me think here. Uh, yeah, I mean, you could divide both sides by cosecant x and make it simpler. But one way of solving this that's quicker that I thought about was what if cosecant x equals 0? Then this entire right side would equal 0, and this entire side would equal 0. So what would it take to make cosecant x equals 0? Oh, but it can't, though. Okay, Because cosecant's a reciprocal of sine. There's no way. This is a problem we did earlier. There's no way to make this equals 0. Okay, so I think we're safe. We're trying to algebraically get x by itself if we can, so let's divide both sides by cosecant x. Okay, so that makes the cosecant over here cancel out. And cosecant squared divided by cosecant just gives us 1 cosecant x. That still equals negative square root of 2 cotangent x. Um, so let's put things in terms of sine and cosine. Maybe that'll help us solve. Cosecant's a reciprocal of sine. So this is the same thing as cosecant. And cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. Tangent is sine over cosine. So it means cotangent is cosine over sine. So we've got cosine x over sine of x. Okay, so we can multiply both sides by sine. That would make these both cancel out. So we get 1 equals negative square root of 2 cosine x. And then I'm still trying to get x by itself, so I can divide both sides by negative square root of 2. So I get negative 1 over the square root of 2 equals cosine x. But that doesn't have the denominator rationalized, and that's one reason why we always emphasize rationalizing the denominator. is because we might not recognize what that is, but it is one of our special triangles. Just got to give myself more room to work. Because if you rationalize the denominator, if you multiply the top and the bottom by square root of 2, you get negative square root of 2 over 2 equals cosine of x. Okay, so x is an angle. What angle makes the cosine ratio equal negative square root of 2 over 2? And there's two. There's two places where that happens, right? Um, so cosine is positive if you use all students take calculus. Cosine is positive here and here. That means cosine would be negative here and here. And to have a reference angle so that we have uh, the adjacent over hypotenuse to equal square root of 2 over 2, that's our special triangle where this would be a 45 degree reference angle. So that means cosine would be 135, uh, sorry, the angle would be 135. So back up here, this is x equals 135, or for this other angle, that's 180 plus another 45, that's 225. Or if you want that in radians, you can take the degree, divide by 180, and stick a pi on there. So that's 3 fourths pi. And 225, you want to convert that to radians, divide by 180, stick a pi on there. And 1.25, that's 5 fourths pi. Okay, so those are the two x coordinates where we should have horizontal tangents. Um, so at 3 pi over 4, um, so where is that? 3.1416 times 3 divided by 4. So that's 2.356. So that looks to be right around where Q is. And then the other one is 5 times 3.14 divided by 4. That'd be 3.9. So apparently over here it's going to slope off and have another horizontal tangent. But um, the textbook problem only gave us this graph. Just trying to make sure I'm not missing anything. No, I guess that's it. So we found out that this is most likely Q because Q is somewhere between 2 and 3 according to our textbook. 
Um, and then if we want the equation of the horizontal line, it's horizontal, right? So we really want to know what the y-coordinate is, because a horizontal line is just y equals some constant. So we know that this occurs at x equals 3 pi over 4. What's the y value? We can figure that out by plugging that back into this equation. Um, since this video has been going on for a while, let's use a calculator to do that. So cosecant x, you can use that with some calculators, but remember cosecant is just the reciprocal of sine. So I want to do 3 times pi divided by 4 because that's my x coordinate. So I'm going to copy that to my clipboard. Um, and I'm going to plug that into this equation for y. So cosecant, I want to figure out what sine is of this angle. And then cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So I have to do 1 divide by sine to get cosecant. And then we're going to multiply that times square root of 2. So it gives us 2. So 1 plus 2. And then we've got to plug it in here for cotangent of x. So we've got 3 pi over 4. 3 times pi divided by 4. So I'll copy that to my clipboard again. Cotangent is just the reciprocal of tangent. So figure out what tangent is of this angle. And then the reciprocal would still be negative 1. And I think that's it. So it should just be negative 1 here. So I plugged our x coordinate in. I got y equals 2. So it looks like that's the horizontal tangent. The equation is y equals 2 for that horizontal line down here.